I think I'd enough now to do a feature story on the customs office, Hector. But uh, before I go, there is one thing I'd like. Uh, do you have a recent case? A case, say, in the last year or two that might be of interest to public as a feature story along with the article. Well, um, there's something a little, uh, you know, with a lot of excitement. You know how it's are. Well, this dance hall racket might interest you. Dance hall racket. Sounds like an interesting story, but uh, I see how it ties up with customs. Long story. If you've got the time, I can... Uh... Well, I've got the time. Can I hear the story? Helen, bring me in the dance hall racket. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for a little intermission. I have a little announcement to make. The Siemens dance will be held next Friday night, and all merchant seamen with papers will be able to buy their tickets at half price. Mr. Scally wants you should enjoy yourselves and bring all the friends you have. That's all. Now go get a drink. The bar needs the money. What are you turning so fast for? You know I read slow. There's nothing to read, stupid. They're just pictures. Go ahead. I'm going. A very funny guy. Crazy about baseball. How'd you like to take a trip, baby? A trip? Sounds good. Where to? Hawaii, of course. What do you mean, a trip to Hawaii? Yeah, hey, Jack, this guy wants to take a trip. To Hawaii? Hey, Bert, what's going on? What gives with this Hawaii bit? Well, when a gal kisses a guy, she likes a little privacy. That's why the palm tree's there. Well, why do they call it going to Hawaii? What a palm trees in mind you, stupid. Oh, I get it. Palm trees, Hawaii. Oh, what a brain. What a brain. What a trip. What a trip. Hey, boss, there's a guy out here to see you. I said there's a guy out here to see you. Not a guy, Ice Pick. A gentleman. Show him in. I'm in. I got some beauties for you this time, Mr. Scully. Yeah? Where are they? Where else? The hearing aids. <laughs> You'd never get past the customs. That's the first place they'd frisk. I had them glued underneath the dog's ear. Hey, that's pretty shrewd. That's what they call a man's best friend. Hey, that's cute. Right under the ear. Huh? Hey, these are exquisite. With good dough. Pay him, Vincent. Here you go. Hey, wait a minute. This is only five grand. Oh. 
You want it? You don't want it. I want it. That's better. They're pretty sharp, huh? Rose. Somebody call me? See that gentleman that just left here? He's crazy about you. I don't even know the guy. You're lucky. You will. I want you to have a drink with him. To see that he has a drink. A real good drink. Oh, please. Not that Mickey routine again. The Indian head penny. What are you bothering? What are you always bothering him for? You have to do something, do it. What are you bothering? What are you bothering? What a creep. Good little dog. Hey, Punchy, will you do me a favor? Take care of the dog for me. Oh, sure. I'd be glad to come. Want a drink? Oh, I'd love one, but can I sit down, please? Sure. What do you have? Bartender. <whistles> Eleven years in the can. Victor Pappas, public enemy number three, ten years ago, was released today from the federal penitentiary after serving 11 years of a 10-to-life sentence. To this day, the quarter of a million in gold bullion involved in the original crime has not been recovered. Police officials doubt the gold can be recovered, pointing out that should the gold be found by Pappas, the insurance company would have the first claim. A quarter of a million in gold, and this guy used to be a partner. Hey, I'd sure like to meet this guy. You'll have your chance, Vincent. Giving a little party for him tomorrow night. A party? Oh, you talked to him already. Pretty shrewd. That's right, Vincent. Say, uh, isn't it about time you made your rounds? Yeah, I almost forgot. You know, for a while I thought you were different from the rest of these crumbs. But you're not. You're all the same. Hey, that's a pretty sharp dress. You make it? <laughs> I'm a riot, huh? Ready! Uh, yelling for your boyfriend, huh? I'll give you something to show him. Ready! What's up, boss? Go get Scally. Drunk again, huh, doggy? This fella never could hold his liquor. But I never thought he would pass out with a slick chick like you. Look, hey, get out of here, okay? We're gonna see your friend. He's a little loaded, you know? He's gonna get back to the ship, okay? He had too much to drink, you know? Okay, well, I already took the dog home. But listen, don't forget the boat sails at 7.30 tomorrow morning, so get him down there on the dock early because the captain don't wait on nobody. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. What's the trouble, Vincent? Killed him. Just like that. What's the matter with you? Couldn't you wait till you get him someplace besides a crowded... besides a crowded dance hall? Don't worry. No one's gonna find out nothing. Look, we just caught him down the back steps. Uh, Drop him in the brineys. Another guy got bumped. That's all. It's easy. You help him. Make sure nobody wises up the guy's dead. Afterwards, I want to see all three of you in my office. Fortuna, baby. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? I'd have arranged a little, a little something. Some entertainment, perhaps. Like Vinny, slitting a nice old lady's throat. Baby, Vincent's all right once you get to know him. By the time you get to know him, you're dead. But that's beside the point. Where have you been? I've been waiting for five minutes, and you know I don't like to wait up here. There was a little trouble. Vinny, as usual. When are you going to get rid of that underdeveloped ape? When you marry me? But let's not talk about him. What shall we talk about? The last PTA meeting you attended? What do you say things like that for? You know it irritates me. I like to see your cheeks get rosy. Don't play with me. Look, baby, I love you. Let's get married. Married? Oh, how sweet. Mrs. Alberto Scali and her new groom will honeymoon in the groom's vine-covered cell. Look, baby. Don't call me baby and let go of my arm. Umberto, there's a lot of difference between making love with you and getting married. Well, how would it look for me to be married to a... Well, how would you describe yourself? A racketeer? 
gangster? Look, I got something big on tap now. Remember my telling you about Victor Pappas? Guy used to be my partner. You mean the, uh, gentleman who's serving his time in the federal penitentiary? Was serving time, baby. Don't call me baby. I'm sorry. Anyway, he got out today. Throwing a little party for him tomorrow night. So? So he's got a quarter of a million bucks hidden away. I'm the boy that's going to find out where. $250,000? In gold bullion. It'll be mine before the week's out. Well, that's not bad for a starter. Perhaps my little dove has the possibilities of a big time after all. Could I have misjudged you? I got a hundred grand worth of smuggled diamonds stashed away, too. Just a starter. This place will bring me that much a year without even coming near it. Perhaps things will work out after all, darling. I'd better leave now, darling. The, uh, junior league needs me. As much as I need you, baby? I'm afraid so. Smart cookies. What's the matter with you? Why do you think I sent Rose to give the guy a Mickey? I didn't want him killed. Look, a thing like this gets out, I buy the guy's stuff, then have him knocked off. First thing you know, nobody wants to sell me anything anymore. Which reminds me, where's the five grand? Nobody's home, boss. You say nobody saw you. Are you sure? I guess nobody saw him, boss. I was right there and I didn't see him. Okay, but let's... Know that. What is it? Hey, boss. Maxine needs you up front. Okay. I expect you come with me. Vinny, you and Rose stay here till I get back. Big deal. I killed a guy. This makes me a criminal. Well, what are you telling me for? Why don't you tell Scally? Ah, that's the trouble. You're so sarcastic. You don't act like a guy's girl at all. I'm not anybody's girl until I know they can take care of me. Ah, you've been doing okay so far. What? With a ring that has so many flaws that Scally wouldn't even want it? And a mangy fur coat that Maxine wouldn't wear? I don't know. I could have a lot of other chicks if I wanted them. So why don't you? Then maybe you'd leave me alone. Because I don't want any other chicks, Rose. I want you, baby. Mm -hmm. I like you, Vinny. I think you know that, but I don't want to wind up like, like that old dame Maxine. We well, used to be Scally's flame. Look at her now, lugging some jerk around the floor for two bucks worth of tickets. I don't want to wind up like that, Vinny. Look, I'm not going to say nothing now. I got a lot of big plans. What? I'm thinking all the time. And if everything works all right, baby, I'll listen. Okay, break it up. Gone back to work. And Vinny, watch that temper of yours. Okay, boys. This is all we found on the body. One diamond, slightly used. Two tickets to a place called Scally's Dance Emporium. Broken watch chain, and last year's dog license. How about the seaman's body? Have you identified that yet? No, not yet. But our boys are still working on it. Mm-hmm. Scally's Dance Emporium. Sounds like a real pleasant place. So they tell me, he's been on our list for quite a while because most of the people that go there are seamen. As of yet, we've never been able to connect him with anything, but he used to be in a racket, so the odds are that he's still mixed up in this smuggling. 
Okay, I'll see what I can dig up. Uh, will I have a partner on this? No, this is strictly a customs job, and you're the only man we can spare. And frankly, it's a miss could be a pretty tough nut. That's the reason we brought you in from New York. Mm -hmm. This figures. Ex-seaman, no family, and highly expendable. You better not be seen around this office again. No, your next move is to uh, get some papers, dress as a seaman, and spend a lot of time at the dance hall. Make friends with everyone you meet there, and keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. As soon as you feel that you have to contact us, give me a buzz, and we'll arrange a place that won't be too risky. Uh, how about expenses, Inspector? You know, expense account. All the dance tickets you want. I want the three tickets. Oh, three tickets, how crunchy. You're getting to be quite a big spender. Yeah, I got lucky at the race yesterday. Yeah, what'd you do, bet two cents the show? Oh, miss, roll. <laughs> You always take all the tickets? Sure, it's quicker that way. Do the boys around here get fresh with you? They don't if they know what happened. What happened? We yelled for Bert. Who's Bert? You know, the dark complected chap. Always uh, wears the dark suit, stands around the club all the time. Is he tough? You see, tough. Baby, you haven't seen him in operation yet. Once I saw him take on four sailors all at once. What happened? He threw all four of them down the stairs. And brother, were they beaten up? What happened to Bert? He had to comb his hair. Oh, how are you doing? Let me get out there. Ah, new girl, huh? Uh huh. What's your name? Dottie. Where'd you ever get in this racket? Well, I worked in a real estate office and bought. Oh, stop! You're killing me. Well. There, I work in a dime store. Oh, yes, I know. The boss made a pass at you. <laughs> How did you know? I used to work in a dime store myself. What happened? What happened? I made a pass at the boss. <laughs> did you get fired? No, I got some money. Kid, you earn. Well, I just want to save up for education. Oh, you're talking. You're pretty smart. Sure came to the right place. I thought maybe I could go to night school. Night school? That's dumb. I tried that once. There's nothing there. You know something? Those fellas don't even have pocket change. Listen, one guy once took me to a restaurant and asked me to have a cup of coffee. And I said, don't they serve anything in this restaurant but coffee? And you know something? He almost passed right out on the stool. That professor. He was kind of curious. I guess you've had a lot of experience. Experience, honey, I could write a book and someday I'm going to. You know something? I once had a fella give me a diamond ring and I never had to do anything for it. I didn't even have to kiss him. And he used to call me Angel. What a jerk. What a character he was. What happened to the ring? The ring, I hocked it. And you know something else? I had my own home and put my own money down on it. I got $12,000 from a drunk. Listen, if you're smart, honey, you'll just save your money. And any time you get in trouble, you just call for Maxine here, and I'm going to tip you off to something. Don't bother with those young guys, because you're no novelty to them. What you have to do is get the older men, see? And it's so nice talking to you, honey. Listen, and any time you want something, just call Maxine, and that's what they say about me. Boy, she's a good listener. 
<laughs> I guess that's what makes me a success around here. buying me a drink. Hey, I thought they threw you out of here. Oh, no, no, I bought some more tickets. I bet I can make you buy me a drink. How much you bet? I bet you a dollar. All right. I tell you a story, and when I get through the story, if you don't buy me a drink, I owe you a drink, okay? Okay. <laughs> well, once upon a time, I was hunting lions deep in the heart of Africa. And about three o'clock in the afternoon, my guide was eaten up by a leopard. Yeah? Then about an hour later, I run into a nest of lions. Great big ones. Now one lion comes charging out of the brush after me. So I pick up my trusty rifle, and boom! I let him have it right between the eyes. Killed him, huh? No. No, but gave him a dick into the head. Well, then a little later, another lion comes chasing out of the brush after me. He's charging down. Again, I pick up my trusty rifle and... No bullets! Now the lion is coming down. He's charging down on me. I reach out. I grab a big handful of yours. And I throw it and kill him dead. Wait a minute. A handful of yours? Yeah, I reach out and grab a handful of yours. Yours? What's yours? Bourbon and soda. Uh. This is it. What are we coming in here for? We're gonna meet King Tut. What are you, stupid or something? Look, you're a little mixed up. Maybe 20, 30 girls a day come here for jobs. You know, we get jobs, girls, big class model agencies. You're lucky I'm interviewing you. Let me see your legs. Come on, let me see some legs. Yeah, that's pretty sharp. Take your dress off. I'm going to get some real sharp. What are you, stupid or something? Do you think you're going to wear this out there? These guys, they come in, they're spending money to dance with a sharp-looking chick. Take your dress off. Oh, there's something real nice here. And when Punchy sees this, the whole salary goes. Yeah, we'll find some of this. Hey, here's some. Yeah, this is beautiful. This will get lots of tickets, yeah. Put it on. What would you do, come from the farm? Who ever told you wear a strapless dress with a bezier? Take it off. You see these girls here? These girls start out here maybe fifty, sixty dollars a week. Today, maybe making five, seven hundred. You play... Wait a minute, there's Mrs. Scully. Look. And don't forget, I treated you nice, right? Was I fresh with you? See? Okay, get dressed. I'll be in in a minute. Well, what's the matter with you? I came here for a guy gave me a bad time. Well, gee, that's tough. Yeah, and I need it, too. It's a good job. Go ahead, get dressed. Who was it? Oh, I don't know, some curly-haired guy. Oh, that was pretty. Don't pay any attention to him. Well, who do we pay attention to? The one to get near who's birth. He's the dark guy, never says anything. 
Do you have a bad time with this? Could you help? Uh, more tickets. I guess I haven't got any more tickets. I guess I'll have to shovel along. Well, what do you think? Are you going to let you dance for nothing? I've got to make you know. they call you punchy. So? Well, most people call me Edson. Can I buy you a drink? Sure. But I don't know nothing. What do you mean you don't know nothing? Well, nobody uh, buys me any whiskey unless they figure I got some information. And they just didn't want you buying me a drink and then afterwards saying that I robbed you because they didn't tell you anything. Uh, <laughs> what did you say you was? Edson, Charlie Edson. I just got in off the of Seattle Queen. Oh, the saddle cream. I didn't even know it stopped here this trip. Yeah, about six hours. But it was a bum ship and a lousy skipper. Besides, I had three months' pay coming. Why should I stay on a ship? Yeah, that's right. I never stay on a ship that got a bad captain. You know, especially you got money coming. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, they tell me the fellow that runs this place is a pretty easy guy to do business with. Mm, well, that depends on what kind of business. Um, what did you have in mind? Well, uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather talk to the boss about that. Oh, I know you from somewhere. Not sure. You look familiar to me. You ever been to jail? Yes. Oh, I remember. You're Edson. Yeah, Edson. Don't you remember? On the after American run. I was Stewart. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, now I remember. They, um, they called you Ice Pick. Have a drink. Hey, Danny, two specials. That's the way you get a decent drink around here. You got to order a special. Thanks for that information. I knew when I saw you earlier this evening, I knew you from somewhere. What you been doing with yourself? Oh, just floating around from here to there. Let's see, the last time I saw you was on the, um, Millie, Millie Malloy, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Say, you know, it's a good thing you left the ship when you did. Yeah, why? Well, there was about four or five guys bringing stuff to Customs. So? Well, Customs didn't know about it. And about uh, a week after you left, Customs hit. Got them all cold. I'm luckier than you think. Yeah, were you passing stuff too? Well, guys got to make a living. Look, uh, I've heard from the smart people that uh, little stuff could be handled through here. You do the right guy. Mm, yeah, maybe. Tell you what, it's going to be an after-hours party tomorrow night, and after the party, I'll bring you up to, to see Scully. do now? The dancing all night, that's what. With or without tickets? With tickets. So what's wrong with that? Tickets he made himself. He only bought three from me. What are you doing? Going to competition? No, no. I figured that's all all by myself. From uh, Rosie here, I got to pay 12 cents a ticket. I stand by myself, it just cost me four. You see, I say uh, eight cents a ticket. Go on, Ho. Give me a gin and orange juice. Maybe you've had enough. Maybe you can't hear so well, huh? Maybe you'd like to go home tonight in one piece. Give me a gin and orange juice. Wilma. What is it, Mr. Kelly? 
Go over and tell her she's had enough. She's through for the evening. All right. Mrs. Scally said you had enough to drink. Go on home. Come back tomorrow. Well, you tell that department store dummy. If he has any orders for me, he can give them to me personally. I'm only telling you what he said. Don't give me any of your lips, stupid. contact so soon. What's up? Scally's your boy, all right. I met a little fella that remembered me from another job. Uh, he doesn't realize I knocked over the ship he was on when he met me. Lucky for me, he seems to be one of the gang. Only Scally is your boy. Uh, have you had anything definite yet? No, but there's a party tomorrow night and I'm invited, so I'll know more after that. Well, you have a radio in the back of your car and if you can get in touch with us from time to time, it'll help. Mm -hmm. And look, Edson, we're going to have a special squad of city police standing by just in case you feel it we can pull a rate. Mm -hmm. I'll be on 24-hour watch until this thing's closed. Okay, I'll do my best. Okay. Good luck. Here's your coat, boys. Yeah, boys. Did you tell the band they have to stay late? Yeah, boys. Remember, nobody at the party here tonight are the girls and city customers we can trust. Yeah, boys. I don't want any trouble tonight. Yeah, boys. Did you iron all the bartender's aprons? Yeah, boys. Did you put the cat out? Yeah, boys. Did you put the cat in? Yeah, boys. Well, which is it, in or out? <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, I got all hung up here. This is the most crazy story. It's about a space guy comes down on a beam. Forget the... the beam. Are you sure everything's right for the party? Sure, I'm sure. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Ice pick okay some guy for the party tomorrow night. I used to know him in a merchant. What's his name? Uh, Edson. He's the right guy. Besides, this guy's coming up from the Orient to bring us some, some good stuff. If things go right, I won't be interested. Turn this whole place over to you to run, just take a cut, and I'll go into something a little nicer. Hey, I thought I was supposed to be with you. We're going to go into something nicer. You mean you'd turn this place down if I offered it? No, it's not that, but jeez. Don't get greedy, Vincent. It's not very healthy. Can I come in and talk to you a minute, boss? All right, Spick. I'll tell you mine. Sure about? Yeah. That depends. On uh, what? Well, you know that chick Mary I met? Well... So? I want to get married. And you want me to throw the party? No. It's just that... She wants me to get out of the rackets and, uh... Her father will give me a job in the factory, and uh, I'd like to get through with things here. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Ice Pick. You can go. I'll even send you a wedding present. Gee, thanks, boss. I didn't know it would be this easy. Just remember to keep your mouth shut, or you'll find out how hard it can get. Remember? 
Maybe I'm just no good. I'm just no good at all. In fact, I'm lousy. You're not lousy, honey. Oh, yes, I am. All right, so you're lousy. Who are you calling lousy? You said it yourself. That's right. I'm lousy. That's what I am. Why do you think you're lousy? Because I'm a phony. That's what. I'm a fake. I ain't really good looking at all. No. No. I'm bald. See? They ain't really my hair at all. Oh, that's all right, honey. I still think you're nice. Size trick. He's kind of cute. What do you mean? Well, he's kind of quiet. He never tries anything. Don't you know? He's bashful. No, but you, I can stare at him. Get hurt. It's the sexy one. You better lay off. Come on, girls. The customer's coming in. You got to get out there. The ice pick. Yeah. Here, my zipper is stuck. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, yes, there is. Try it again. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, yes, there is. Try again. Ah, oh, you're kidding. Well, it just doesn't seem to work for me. Try it from the front. All right. Cut it off, will you? But, honey, you're such a dreamboat. I'm gonna go for you. Yeah, I know, but, uh... Yeah. Of course. Just remember. Keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Tight. Sure thing, boss. Don't look so worried. Yeah. I told you everything was all right. Yeah, uh... You weren't kidding when you said I could leave, were you? No. I meant it. Well, I mean, like, uh, can I leave right now? Tonight? Before the party? Well... Yeah, 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 you can go. Vinny and Bert can handle things here. I guess you're anxious to get things started with the factory. Yeah, yeah, the factory. Gee, uh, thanks, boss. So long, Ice Pick. Oh, Ice Pick. Just a little bonus to show you that I appreciate some of the things you helped us with around here. Gee, thanks, boss. How would you like to go to Hawaii, do you? Well, I, I don't think I have enough dough. Then cut the back. Let's go. I like you too. Well, it was a rough city, but a mighty fine skipper. Kelly? It's me. I lost 800 bucks at your little establishment, and I want it found. Quick. So how would I know anything about it? Don't give me any of your old routines, Callie. 
I came in here about two hours ago with 800 bucks in my jeans. I spent about 20 on drinks and 20 on the girls. That leaves a lot of money to be accounted for. No. I think you're the guy that can account for it. Look, now how long do you think I could stay in business if I operated that way? I don't know, but I know how long you're going to stay in business unless I get my dough back. Oh, Vincent, can you come here a minute? I'll see what I can do for you. <laughs> now, which girl did you spend the most time with? Oh, I danced with a couple of them. There's one little blonde I spend most of my time with. And she called herself Lois or something. What's the trouble, boys? This gentleman thinks he's been robbed. Says if he doesn't get his money back, he's going to close me down. I think maybe you'd better handle a complaint, Vincent. Yeah, but uh, maybe I think you're right there. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you're going to close this down, huh? Oh. Bert, bring Lois in here. You sure it's all right if we sit down? Why not? Well, I don't know. You look kind of upset about it. You look pretty blue. What's the matter, honey? Don't you feel well? Oh, why should I burden you with my problems? Well, what are friends for? But I hardly know you. I feel that I've known you forever. Now, come on. Tell me. What's the trouble? Oh, I wouldn't want you to give you a sad story or anything. What do I look like, a sucker? I know an honest face when I see one. Oh, thank you. You see, it's my mother. She has to have an operation. I've been working and slaving and on another job days. But the operation costs $500. I've only saved up $430. I need 70 more dollars. There's only one surgeon in the whole country that can do this operation. And he leaves for New York next week. If I don't give him the money by then, my mother may be dead when he gets back. Oh, I... You ain't crying over a lousy 70 bucks. Look it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I haven't got the money on me now, but when I come in tomorrow night, I'll bring it, okay? But he may leave early. I'll go home and get it now. Oh, you don't go away. Stay right here. I'll be right back. Boss, you're the shrewdest in life. Get rid of that paper, Benny. Just drop them in a drink, they float away. Vincent, <laughs> I said get rid of that paper. Okay, boys. Come in. Hey, get your filthy hands off of me. How come you take me away from my best customer? Okay, Bert, go on back to work. Sit down, Lois. Lois, how long have you worked for me? Three years. Have I been nice to you? Sure. Then why don't you be nice to me? Hey, what was that for? For not following the rules. What rule did I break? When you make a score, you get 60%. The house gets 40. I know that. I know you know. But I didn't see any money. I didn't make any. Lois. I didn't see any money. I didn't make any. That ought to be enough, Vincent. Stand up, Lois. Here, yeah, help her up, Benny. Here, yeah, sit down, dear. Yeah. Why do you lie to me? Haven't you got any conscience? I know you made the score. Now are you going to turn it over, or are we going to have to take it away from you? Honest, Mrs. Skelly, I didn't make any score. Vincent. I think we're going to need your knife. Yeah, I think so. Where do you suppose she has it hidden, Vincent? I don't know. Maybe it's in a throat. Start the search party, Vincent. Here, Lois. Your cut would have been bigger if it hadn't have been for the collection costs. Don't worry. Next time I'll come to you. 
I still can't figure out how you knew I had it. There isn't much goes on around here I don't know about. See, I run this place like a department store. Now, if you were a clerk in a department store, you wouldn't expect to keep all the money you made when you sold something, would you? This babe would, boss. You don't look so good. Better take the rest of the night off. See you tomorrow night. Can anyone have a little privacy around here? Sorry, the tree's busy tonight. Oh, really, the tree. Do this, baby. I like the way you get away. Can I have a glass of carbonated water, please? Sure, yeah, sure. Say, ain't I seen you in here before? I wouldn't be surprised. I come in here every night. Yeah, now I remember. You're the guy they tell me about. You come in here every night, buy a dollar's worth of tickets. You never dance with anybody. What are you going to do with all those tickets? You must have thousands by now. 730, counting tonight. Hmm, just between you and me. What do you figure to do with all them tickets? You really want to know? Why else would I ask? I'm going to save them up, see? Till I got enough to buy out this whole joint, lock, stock, and barrel for one night. Then I'm not going to let anybody else come up here. I'm going to dance with all them girls, all by myself, all night long. What a beautiful thought. Kind of poetic somehow. You know, they can say what they want to, but I like you. You know, you think big. You know what I mean? You think big. Yeah, I think big. And you know, I'm going to make a trip to Hawaii every 15 minutes on the dock. Every 15 minutes? Every 15 minutes. Here, the original Peeping Tom. I never did this before, honest. Well, this is one time you shouldn't have done it at all. I won't do it again, I, I promise. I'll say you won't. Wait, I tell Mr. Scully. You don't have to tell him. Uh, I won't do it again. Can't you just let it go at that? Do you have any money on you? No, but I've got some tickets. Oh, yeah, now I remember you. You have hundreds of tickets. Give me a ticket. All my tickets that I've been saving? Shall I call Mr. Skelly? No, no, don't do that. He won't let me come up here anymore. Well, what's the argument? Give me the ticket. But I don't have them with me right now. Well, give me what you have and bring the rest tomorrow night. All right, if I have to. Shall I let Mr. Skelly decide that? No, no, here, here's the tickets. Heck, now I'll never get to go to Hawaii. Oh, uh, come here. Boys and girls, let me have your attention. The guest of honor will be here in a minute. His name is Victor Pappas. He's just spent 11 years in the federal pen, and we want to show him a real welcome home. Show him a good time. Remember now, be on your good behavior. Hello, Victor. How are you? Welcome back to the old place. Here, sit down, join the festivities. 
Say, why doesn't Papa say something? Well, he knows where there's a quarter of a million in gold hidden. And all the cons are trying to get it out of him. They wouldn't talk. So they cut out his tongue. Cut out his tongue? Yeah. Some of those cons got a funny idea of what's right and what's wrong. I have a little surprise for you, Victor, but we'll wait a minute for that. First, you remember Maxine? You remember how you used to like her Charleston? Maxine, give with the Charles. Okay, boys. <laughs> I understand this guy can't talk. Yeah. Somebody cut his tongue out. Yeah. But he can still use his hands. Okay, Punchy, it's your turn. Let's give her the entertainment. Uh, we got to take you all on a little trip, ladies and gentlemen. And now I like to do my version of the Tahitian love dance. What are you doing here? Why aren't you at the rest of the party? I figured you and me could have a little party, Mr. Scally. What do you mean, Vincent? You know, the nice little party, Pappas and Rose, the thing you fixed up there. Now, don't do anything you'd be sorry for, Vinny. Sorry? Well, I should be sorry bumping you off. I'd have Rose in this crummy place. You, you can have Rose. It, it was only a gag, anyhow. Oh, that was a funny gag. I'm hysterical. I'm hysterical, Mr. Scully. Vinny, you, you know, you can't get the dough from Pappas unless he tells you where it is. What are you worrying about, Mrs. Scal? You don't think I'd kill you, do you? Just Hey, look, Rose, you and I can live with you without you.
some story. Well, um, after Scully got killed and, and Vinnie got killed, what happened to the dance hall? Well, this fellow Burke took it over. I see. Well, uh, is he running it now? Well, he's running it all right right now, but oh. if time he'll probably slip, we'll be doing the whole thing over again. What a thing. Just a ring around the rosy. Just customs keeps going all the time. Thanks a lot for the story, Inspector. I'm sure we got enough. That's okay. Thank <laughs> you.